Hello friends, you're with Lonesome Gamer and today I'm playing Federico Villani's 1841 in Northern Italy. And uh, well, for most of you, and I know most of you are probably not big fans of the 18xx series and uh, are probably already considering turning this off. Um, for most of you this just looks like a pretty trashy game you can see it's a it's kind of a self-made copy not by me it's uh, by Chris Lawson and um, uh, but the uh, the ones of you who who know a little about the 18xx family they know that this is definitely a real grail game and uh, it really is it's it's very hard to get and the price is astronomical um, and it is a fantastic game. There is no doubt about that. It, it gives you options that you don't have in any of the other 18xx games and uh, I'm really glad I own this one and we're gonna... yeah, let, let's, let's give it a try. So, um, let's take a closer look at what we have here um, first you can see we have tons of tile back here I mean really tons of tiles uh, compared to other games of the of the series I don't know maybe the real big ones like uh, I don't know 18OE or something come with that many tiles but the ones that I own don't and uh, the ones that I've done videos about like 1830 or 1856 definitely don't and it was kind of fun when I played um, I played that solitaire 1841 and then a few days later I played 1830 with my gaming group and I really realized how restricted you are with the tiles there and how hard that uh, that can make your life sometimes. I'm not saying this is a bad thing but it's a very different uh, feel uh, for sure. So here you had all kind of uh, crazy tiles going on you know stuff like this or like that and uh, you can see uh, I don't know something like this right and uh, or here you got, you got these things here wait a minute where are they uh, gosh there we go yeah these brown tires here which look like red tires in the light here but yeah so you can see all these kind of crazy things that you usually don't find in your 18xx game then you can see here you also have a ton of different companies also pretty unique um, there are different types of companies. First you have minor companies and major companies and the uh, major companies are basically your standard companies with the 20% and then the 10% shares and the minor companies have 40% uh, presidency and then three 20% shares. In this game you don't have any private companies which is I think also pretty uncommon. I think in most of the games you do have privates. Here you don't. What you do have though is you have also the distinction between uh, historical companies and non-historical companies. So you do have historical minor and majors and you do have non-historical minor and majors. And by the way, if you don't know the rules for 18xx games in general, uh, this is not what you want to start with and you should not um, I'm not going to explain the basic rules. I did a playthrough of 1830 and you might want to see this then or there are also tons of other um, playthroughs, introductionary playthroughs into the system in general 
but this is a pretty specific game with a lot of special rules and uh, I'm not gonna explain the standard rules here. Okay, anyway, so we got these historical companies and we got the non-historical companies and we also have minors and majors. Cool. Let's have a look at the board. You can see here this is Northern Italy. I'll step back a little bit so you can see it a little better here. And um, here, for example, we have here Venice, and uh, this is Lugano in Switzerland, and uh, down here is Firenze, Pisa, and Genoa here. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> One important aspect in the game are historically the historical development of borders. So <clears throat> there are different borders on the map. You can see, well this one is pretty obvious here, this darker green area. Uh, we have a border here. If I go a little closer you can see it. There's acrylic one which is not perfectly clean. Usually the map <laughs> is a little easier to see I guess. And yeah so the border goes like basically like this right and then it goes like this and then it goes like this. Okay. Um, in addition to that and this is the so this is the Austrian border until 1850 Eight, I think. No, until 1859. I'm not sure. I think it's 1859. Yeah. And this will be a border which is in effect at the beginning of the game. Okay. And then we have the conservative zone, which is this one here. And there it is a border here that, that shares that. And then it goes down here here. So basically this chunk of the map is the conservative zone. Down here is the, there's a little bit of border here and then, uh, and then like this. So this is the Piemontese Tuscanian border down there. And uh, I think that one I'm not sure, to be honest. Huh. I'm not absolutely sure what that part actually is. Let's let's have a look. It's it might be in there. Mm. We have the borders here, uh, but it's not written how these areas are named. I don't know what that area is actually named at that point. I don't know histor the historical name of this piece of the board. Anyway, um, so it's kind of, yeah, it's basically then the rest. It goes here and it covers mostly this part here. If you know it, you can leave a comment. Okay, so, um, yeah, at the beginning of the game, as I, and, and by the way, there is this little Swiss border here, which separates Lugano from the rest of the map. So at the beginning of the game we have this Swiss part. This is permanently in play, right? So this is kind of uh, in Switzerland here. And then we have this area and we got the conservative zone. We got this lower part and this one. So all these little pieces. Then when the three train, uh, when the three trains come out, um, this will change, will it? Eh, maybe not. No, no, it won't. But when the four trains come out, um, we have basically a, a unified Italy and only this little part here remains 
Austrian, so only this border and Swiss, Switzerland is in effect. And then when the five trade comes out, uh, um, also these uh, borders here, these disappear and only uh, the Swiss border remains in effect. So you have a um, yeah, changing of the borders and um, that affects gameplay at least during the first half of the game pretty heavily. Another very important aspect um, which, we'll re which uh, we will explore in more t detail later is um, the idea that the companies themselves can own shares of other companies. And I think this is also pretty unique. Um, the companies can even start new companies and then uh, the controlling, the, the, the president of the starting company will also control the started company. But Um, basically the, the, the starting company will, um, will simply work as a president like in a normal game. So for example, if there's a forced train purchase, the starting company will have to do it from their money. And uh, yeah, if you pay out revenue and a company owns shares of a company, of another company, then this will be income for um, for the shareholding company and not for the player. And I had a situation where a company was doing much better uh, in my solo game, where a company was actually doing much better than the player itself, but there was simply no way to get the money out of the company into the player's hand. That, that was really weird. So these kind of things are possible in this game. And, uh, but as I say, we're going to see later how that uh, really works. Another aspect are mergers. It is possible here that minor companies, two minor companies can mer can, uh, may merge into a major company and also two major companies may merge into, well, a major company, a new major company. Minor companies may also convert into major companies uh, under specific uh, circumstances. And, well, maybe another interesting aspect. Uh, in my solo game, it wasn't that terribly important. But there were a few situations where it actually was important. Um, was the fact that players can trade shares between each other. That is also pretty unique for 18xx games. Uh, usually you can only trade with a bank pool or buy shares from the initial offering. But you cannot trade between players. Sometimes maybe private companies, but not shares themselves. And you know, this is getting really interesting. For example, if two players hold 40% of a company, right? And I have one share of that company and now I can offer that share maybe to other players. Okay, who's interested in being the new president of this company? And so uh, I might nearly start an auction or something. It, it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, because if you this share trade between players works during the uh, happens during the buy share phase so if a player wants to buy a share he he can buy it from another player so you cannot sell them like okay who pays the most money and then i give it to you but of course you can um you can still do some kind of bidding um and then do the actual transaction a little bit later in the game. So that is an interesting aspect too. Um, and 
probably the last thing I want to mention right now is the option to trade tokens. Companies can buy, I mean they cannot really buy the tokens from each other, but they can buy the rights of these uh, um, that are basically represented by the tokens from another company if there is a connection to that specific token and then I can pay that company money and exchange the token with one of my uh, my tokens that I still have available and I can place it then there so I don't get additional tokens but yeah you know I can I can exchange uh, the token here and uh, that gives you a lot of room for cooperation, especially if you hold more than one company. Then this is a very interesting um, way first to expand one company and make it really big. And second, it's a fantastic way to transfer money. Uh, because you don't have to use the trains, and sometimes if you, if you use trains to transfer money, you usually will not be able to use that train for at least one run. So there is always a, a, a cost involved here. But if you do it with the tokens, um, yeah, you can just transfer the money, exchange the tokens, and uh, then you can do it backward. And it's just um, usually you don't lose anything by doing that. So that's a, a very interesting feature too. Um, but hey, let's let's start this and uh, do this step by step. It's a it's a big one. It's a very interesting one. It's pretty heavy, and I hope I won't mess up too much. Okay, so actually, before we start, let's take a closer look at the starting auction because that is also pretty different from uh, from other 18xx games. I already mentioned that there are no private companies and these are the the certificates that I usually auction at the beginning of the game. Instead we have these uh, concessions. Uh, you can see, wait a minute, yeah there's a concession, the owner of this concession, oops, can start the so-and-so corporation from this specific place, from a specific place. And there are I think eight concessions now the first concession, which is the, I think it's, is it that one? Yeah, that's the one. This concession here, the first one, which shows the one here. Um, the owner of this concession can take 20 liter from the bank at the end of each stock round. Okay, this is basically your private company. And that is pretty much the, o and this is the only one uh, in the game. So that's the one where you uh, where you get your well permanent revenue a little bit not too much but it, it is something. The thing is though you get it here at the end of the stock round and not at the beginning of each operating round, which means that um, once there are two operating rounds between the stock rounds you get uh, significantly less than uh, from your standard private company in other 18xx games. Apart from that, um, the, the companies, the, the concessions are removed from the game fairly early compared to other games. I think it's actually, yeah, it's, it's phase four. So usually the the minor car, the private stay till five. Here they go away when the first four train is actually purchased. But uh, as I said, apart from this single one, um, all the others are different anyway. Because um, they allow you to start a specific historical corporation. And These historical corporations are the only corporations that you can start at the beginning of the game. So during phase two 
And in this game, it's like uh, when the two trains are out, it's phase two. When the three trains are out, it's phase three. And sometimes it's a little different. You know, the first phase is phase one, and the, but, but here it is, like you start basically in phase two, okay? So during phase two, you can only start historical corporations. And these historical corporations have a fixed starting position. During phase, I think, three, you can also start uh, non-historical corporations. Now, if you start a non-historical corporation, what's interesting about that is you can choose any city as your starting space. And... Uh, yeah, that's obviously a very, very interesting decision you can make here. However, in phase two, you are limited to non-Austrian cities. So, and uh, I think Swiss is also not allowed. I think you can never start in, in Lugano from what I remember. Um, so you cannot start in these cities, in, in, in these areas here in phase two. And uh, I think from phase three, you can then start um, yeah from phase two from phase three you can then start your corporations basically everywhere on the map overall that means at the beginning of the game you are limited to these fixed starting possessions and to start a historical corporation, you need a concession. For the non-historical corporations, you don't need them, and uh, actually they simply don't exist. For the historical corporations, you do, ne you do need a co concession before you can start it. Um, Now, the auction works in the following way. Um, every player, and by the way, I'm playing a six-player game here, okay? We, got, uh, we start with 400 or something, no, 560 bucks, actually. And uh, the bank is pretty big. It has 14,640, I think. And... Um, yeah, I'm playing a six-player game, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. And um, at the beginning of the game, every player will place secret bits on a sheet of paper, right? They just write it down. And... <clears throat> They can bid on as many companies as they, or as many concessions as they want. They cannot bid more than their overall money. And, and that is a little strange, it, it really is. They have to bid at least 20 bucks overall. Um, there is a minimum bid for a concession, which is... 20 and there is no maximum bid except of course your overall money um, then you give the bids or the sheet of paper to the banker the banker then checks if if these were all valid bids and that's kind of the weird thing um, if this is not the case, then the bits, then the whole sheet of paper, your is your sheet of paper is then removed, basically, right? So if you, this maximum bit of twenty is a little strange because uh, if you don't do it, um, your bit is simply invalid. So if you don't want a bit, it's okay. You don't, you know, it's just. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a very weird regulation. Maybe it should make sure that everyone writes something down so that the other players don't see, okay, he's not writing anything. And then if you write something which is invalid, 
you give it to the banker anyways and then he can see okay he doesn't want to bid and we, we remove this uh, piece of paper. Anyway he will um, sort the these sheets of paper from the highest overall bid to the lowest overall bids and that is then the seeding order. So the player who bid the most overall he will be the player who is first and who gets the priority deal and then um, you follow in descending overall um, bits basically after that um, from the from the company number one or concession number one to concession eight the bids uh, are checked and the winner has to pay and then gets the concession if there should be a tide after all the um, all the winners for all the auctions have paid out and everyone received the companies then the rest of the companies um, that were bid upon which ended up with a tight bid are auctioned between the bidding players in a step of five or something this is uh, yeah but it's a uh, pretty specific the companies that nobody has bid on or the concessions they go in the bank pool they can be purchased later in the game for 50 bucks during a stock round not during the first stock round though. So basically if you are willing to buy a specific concession it makes definitely sense to you can bid and you can there is no way to get it cheaper than for 50 bucks except during this auction phase where you have to pay at least 20. So let's let's look at these a little bit. That let's take a look what might be interesting here and uh, what what is maybe less interesting and I find it pretty hard to decide at the beginning when I played the first time I thought yeah okay it's pretty easy but now that I played it once um, I find it much harder to decide they seem to be more balanced than I thought first so of course there is this uh, one which works like a private and I think it's definitely not bad. You can bid on this thing. And I think you can definitely bid, well, I don't know. I mean, it can't hurt to bid probably 40 or 20, 40, maybe even 50 bucks. Because with an income of 20, you know, after two operating rounds or three, you'll have it back. And you will get that many operating rounds out of it. That's for sure. So I think if you pay 40, you're definitely fine with it. But of course, much more is not interesting here. Okay, then we got uh, this one here. Um, the SFLP. Now, where is that? Uh, the SFLP is here in Luca. Okay. So, this is one of the minor companies. This is a. Um, and the advantage of a minor company is. That and that might be especially interesting at the beginning of the game. Um, if you start them at a specific share value, that share value represents not 10%, uh, but 20% of the company. So, and the presidency is 40%. So, you can. invest not too much money but you get a pretty high percentage out of it which means you might be able to get quite some um, quite some revenue quite some some money back from a not too high investment right because it's basically uh, a double share for for a simple price and that is that is I think an, an interesting option 
Um, later in the game, they become less and less interesting because you cannot bring a lot of money into the companies because of that specific rule, right? Because you can only get half the money into the companies. Um, yeah, because you pay basically um, the value for 20% instead for 10 and so if you want to then buy the high price trains or so it becomes more and more difficult uh, during the game to start these minor companies but at the beginning it might be an interesting option an additional uh, factor that we have to consider is there will be the Tuscanen merger um, and this will happen, I think, at the beginning of phase four, or yeah, exactly. So, fairly early in the game, actually. You might say at the beginning of the mid game or something. So, that means that all these three companies here will merge into one big company. And I've seen, at least in my solo game, that this is then the most powerful company. Maybe that happened because these guys were preparing for it and everybody held a little bit of money in the company. So then when the merger happened, it was a very, very rich and um, potent company. But yeah, this is definitely an, an interesting uh, thing to consider, right? Uh, you can also basically, um, if you want to run a company really hard and just, you know, um, just make a lot of money, you might also decide to, to do that here because you know um, the moment when the two trains go away there will be this big merger and then you can yeah you might also use then the trains of the others. This, this new forming company will then basically have the assets of all three companies um, and you might no longer be the president and that is also something you should keep in mind um, that when there is this merger then um, these shares, the 40% shares are not that valuable anymore compared um, to shares of a major company but we will get to this um, a little later but it is something we have to keep in mind if we uh, consider investing in one of these companies down here. Okay, then we got the SFTC. Um, this one is here, and I'm under the impression this is a pretty bad company. And indeed, uh, in the in the second version of the game, they fixed this quite a bit. They they removed this uh, mountains here. They also let it start on a yellow space, and so I got a feeling that this is not a good company at all. Um, so this is possibly the only company that at the beginning no one will invest in. I have that feeling. I mean, I'm going to do a few rolls or, and so, but I really don't think. Uh, maybe for 20 bucks or so, but it's, it's unlikely. The thing is, if you don't use the concessions, they will go away at the end of the stock round. So... Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say, okay, I spent 20 bucks for this thing and then keep it and then maybe later in the game I'll have the, I have the concession to open the company. It doesn't work that way. If you don't do it, the, the concession goes back in the bank pool and you just lost your 20 bucks. Okay, then we got this, uh, this one here, the SBMA, and that is also sitting down here and it works very similar to, to the, uh, what is it? The SFLP, um, it's also a minor company. It's in Firenze, which is a major city. It makes a little more money than Luca. Um, and it will also merge into this new, bigger company then. Next one is the SFTN. We see this up here. And that is actually not a bad company. 
um, mainly because it can easily make a connection to Milan and Milan is um, a very very rich space it's basically your New York or Toronto um, in or you New York in 1830 and the Toronto in 1856 but it's even richer than those it starts with 60 and it goes up to 150 so this is really crazy and if you manage to make a connection there you can make really a lot of money however in the first phase this border will block um, track lay. You cannot lay track in the in phase two um, across borders. Later in the game it is possible but this is something we have to keep in mind so at the very beginning this will not make that much money however it depends on how quick the, the, the two trains fall right. Let's see how many are there. There are eight two trains That's quite a bit and uh, hmm you know I, I don't know it's hard to say then we got the SSFL um, I think it's a pretty good one it starts down here in Pisa and it is also affected by this merger down there it is the the major company down there. The other two are minor companies. This one is a major company which gives you when it comes to the merger it gives you more value. Basically these com the, the shares of the SSFL are worth two shares compared to the minor companies when it comes to to the um, to the merger right I mean they are they are basically they have double the worth compared to these guys um, that makes this interesting on the other hand you get less revenue for your money because um, it only counts as 10% while these count at least at the beginning as 20%. In addition it sits on a on a really interesting location. You can make this quick connection to Firenze which is worth a lot and by the way in this one it's not like 1830 you cannot go from here to there you can only hit um, Firenze once with a train or with the same train right so you can this company could not run from here to here like you can do it in New York in uh, 1830 this doesn't work that way here anyway so this one can go to Firenze which is pretty valuable and it can also go here down to Livorno and then use this port here and the interesting thing about ports in this game is they are free as are the dots right so basically um, you get the money but they, they don't count against uh, the stops that the train is allowed to do so this is a really valuable starting option um, you could also go to Rome there are these connections here at the beginning this is not super valuable it's only 10 but uh, late in the game this is insane it becomes 200 it is one of the most valuable areas in the game at all so um, uh, this is definitely something uh, that looks very attractive to me. We got uh, the SFTG, the blue one, which starts here. 
And that one is interesting because it starts uh, with two dots, a starting dots. So you can place two dots here. And um, it's also pretty easy for these guys to hook up to Milan especially from here, you know, it's just like this. So at the beginning of the game, they can basically run this um, space or these areas here, take Asti maybe. And then when the, uh, once the three trains come and play, they can make this connection to Milan uh, and can make a lot of money there. So I think that's also a pretty good company. And then we got the really interesting one, the IRSFF. That one is interesting as hell because it can already start in Austria, one in Milano, and it also starts with two dots. One starts in Milano, one starts in Venezia. And uh, you got this free port here for 40 bucks. You got here the East for 50 bucks. So you can see this is an extremely attractive area and also Milano with 60 bucks right at the beginning. Bergamo is a big city which gives you I think 30 at the beginning. So you can make here very impressive runs after two or three turns already. I mean seriously impressive runs, right? And talking about two to three hundred bucks after two turns or something and that is just insane compared to most other games however there's a problem with this and that is the uh, Ferdinandian secession At the same time when the when the merger down here the Tuscanian merger happens there is also the Ferdinandian secession that means that um, this Austrian area here, or that one here, will go away, and there is only this um, this space remains Austrian, and that means that this company will get divided into two minor companies. Uh, the problem is that these two minor companies don't um, the the assets of that. Um, of the huge company are not um, are not divided equally but basically the Venetian part or the, the new Venetian minor company would get all the good stuff and 90% of the money and the Italian company will get the shit and only 10% of the money and that is, um, that is something you really have to keep in mind, right? So you can make a ton of money early in the game, but you got to be careful because um, you know, if you get surprised by this secession, you might end up with a presidency of a company this one here then, which is doing really poorly. Um, there is a way to get around this. If you sell a lot of your shares at the right time, basically, so that you have no more than, I think, 30%, you can get around this and you can then say, okay, I only grab the stuff of the Venetian and the... Um, the uh, the Milan company will then go uh, completely into the bank pool and it might probably then sit there to the end of the game because nobody wants to buy that shit. But as I said, you've got to know these things and it is it is a difficult decision, I think, how much money is this thing really worth? At the beginning it's worth a lot, there is no doubt you can make a lot of money uh, by starting this company, but of course other people can also invest. So if you invest in 
um, if you bid a lot on this concession, it gives you, of course, um, the right to buy or to start the company. And uh, there is one thing, if you start a major corporation, you are allowed to buy either 20% or 30 or 40%. So you can make sure you get a big chunk of uh, shares from this corporation. Still, there are other ways, as I said, for example, this one or investing down here might be a more interesting option, especially if you are playing more conservative and going for a long-term strategy. Also this, maybe even that, seem to be very, very interesting options. And then there is the question, how much am I willing to bid for these really strong companies? For example, that one or maybe this one, you know, how much are they worth? I find that very hard to decide. I'm going to do this off camera and then I'm going to roll some dice and I'm going to start the, do these starting bid, bids um, now, basically secretly for each player. So I'm done with the auction and it's obviously pretty hard to do these uh, kind of auctions. Uh, you know, secret bits with all that crap in a solo game. Um, but okay, I'm done here now. And I also have these kind of different personalities, very aggressive players and, and players who are more, to, uh, more loyal to their um, agreements and so on. So I also try to bake that in, in here somehow. And we start now selling these things uh, first, we got to do a seeding order. Um, so, depending on how many money players have spent or are willing to spend, I got to come up with a seeding order. Looks like this guy is in priority. I got to do that off camera. So, let's see. The first concession here goes to player three which is this guy here the, and this is now the new seating order right uh, second concession is tied so this is not done right now. This is not resolved. The third concession goes to the bank. This is this crappy one down there. Nobody wanted that. Fourth concession goes to player two. This guy here. Um, the fifth one. That is this one here. Goes for a very high amount of money to play a five, does that make sense? No, to play a four, and that was kind of weird, but he was, he really wanted to have that. I think that was a strange idea, but okay. Um, the sixth one, which is this one down here, can be very valuable, goes for 110 bucks. Um, that one actually went for 90, which is way overpriced, I think. This one goes for 110 bucks to play a six up here, and that might be worth it. And here comes a crazy thing, play a set, uh, the, the, this one here goes actually to play a five for only 35 bucks. That was crazy, but no one else actually bid on it. So he just placed a bid there and wasn't too interested, but now he's, he sits on it. And he doesn't really want it because he has also managed to get this one here, the IRSFF, for 135 bucks. So now he sits here with two major concessions and uh, it's kind of questionable, does he really want to start them both? And it's not that bad because they are also not too far away from each other, so there might be an, an option to combine them. Um, but yeah, we'll see where this goes. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to, yeah, we got now these two here, player three, 
and player two. Is that true? Yeah, exactly. These two guys, player three and two, they are now competing uh, for for this last one here, the one in Luca. And the interesting thing is that player two is already holding the one in, one in Firenze. So it's definitely interesting for him to say, you know, I also, uh, I'm definitely willing, wait a minute, this is not true at all, wait a second. Shit, I somehow messed this up. Actually, wait a minute. Oh boy, let's let's check that again. So the first company goes to player three, right? <clears throat> it kind of changes between because of the seating order, so I have to... Uh, that's a little tricky. The second company then is... Resolved. Okay, the third doesn't go at all. This one goes to player two. That's the fourth one. Yeah, that's right. Number five goes to player four, right? Number six goes to player two. Ah, there we go. That's the that's the mistake. So this one is also held by player two. So he has to spend. Uh, quite some money here. That is player two. So he has to spend already 190 bucks for these two concessions. And that is just the right to open these companies. I mean, it's pretty awesome. They are both down here. They can work together. They might be able to make a lot of money. Question is, does he want to afford to buy that last company here? And that is questionable. Okay, then we got uh, basically... Number seven goes to player five, and also number eight goes to player five. Okay, so for now we have two players without a concession, and also this guy only holds this private company. So, um, we might say if right now we have only three players that actually start a company. Question is now this last one here, number two. Um, is this guy the so this guy has priority because he ha was willing to bid the most money but he placed a lot of minor bids so in the end he ended up with nothing I mean you can be lucky like here for 35 right he, he got this this blue company here uh, but yeah he he wasn't willing to place to risk that much Maximum of 85 for some of the companies. And that wasn't just enough. Um, anyway, right now it's between player 2 and player 3, right? So this guy has now the option either to, to raise the bid because he sits closer to the priority deal. He could also pass. And then this guy has to take it for 65 bucks and he might actually do that because he already holds that however that would be super powerful if he could control these three companies down here that will then merge and uh, he might also not be too interested in doing getting this company because then if the other two work together uh, he might get cut off or something and then this company might not be that powerful anymore. So let's see what I'm uh, what my decision is here. Okay, this is definitely not gonna work out. He cannot start three companies. He just doesn't have the money to do that. We have a partial um, capitalization in this game, so you don't need 60% uh, or something to float a company. But still, you know, if you want a healthy company, you need a certain amount of money and uh, in that company and you cannot start three companies. It just doesn't work.
even if they merge, I think that's not a great idea. So he's going to pass on that, and that means this guy actually, uh, was it, which player was it now? It's player three. Yeah, yeah, this guy will have to buy it. Okay, so that means now at the end of this auction, player one and player six are investors, and the others will try to start a company. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. Quite a few actually will try to start two companies. Although I'm not sure about this guy, you know, these two major companies, he might, I mean, he has to take, he might consider maybe selling the concession to another player. It is possible during a stock round to trade shares between players and also to trade concessions between players. So, you know, maybe some other people are interested. Maybe this is not, not over yet. And indeed, you know, there is this, this guy has priority and he doesn't hold any concession. Um, this guy has these two concessions here, but this is a very powerful combination and he probably wants to hold uh, these two. But there is this guy here and he, yeah, he's got two major companies here and he is possibly willing to say, okay, I would sell one of my companies or one of my concessions, especially maybe the SFTG. I paid only 35 bucks, so if someone is willing to make a reasonable offer, I might uh, sell that concession. Okay, now this guy is actually willing to buy the blue concession from him, the SFTG, the one here, which is a good company, for 50 bucks. You know, I mean, he he bought it for 35, so in the end, uh, he makes some money, and um, he can focus on this one, and that might make sense. So during a stock round, first you have to sell shares and then you can buy shares okay you cannot sell concessions to the bank you can only sell concessions to other players but that happens during the buying uh, concessions and, sell and and certificate step of the other player so as i said you can either sell your shares your certificates into the bank pool that's quite standard and uh, to a maximum of 50% in the bank pool. You can buy a concession out of the bank pool, but not in the first stock round, for 50 bucks. You can buy shares from the bank pool for the actual market value, or you can buy shares from the initial offering. If you want to start, I already said that, a historical, con, uh, a historical company, and that is the only company that can be started in the first phase, then you need a concession to do so. And uh, your last option is you can buy shares, any number of shares and concessions from one other player for at least a buck. So that gives you a lot of freedom and we've seen that happening right, right away. Um, okay, so that was his action and now it's this player here and he wants to start one of his companies so he purchases uh, yeah, we got to see, we can start our companies at these price values, these red values here. So there is a huge range from 68 to 340. You could see this is pretty crazy. Um, the minor companies can only be started in this white area. 
actually the minor company's share value never goes into the yellow zone. Okay, and as I said, the market value of a minor company represents 20% of that company, the market value of a major 10%. I already see myself in trouble. It seems very hard. It seems I can only start a single company here. So the thing is, I considered, for example, starting um, the minor company. And I thought about starting it at 68, right? The, the lowest possible value. So the thing is, I need a train. Technically, I don't need a train. I need a train to hook up. Uh, when I'm hooked up, when I can run a route, I will need a train. But I want to run this thing, right? So that means... Um, well, probably I want to run it. But if I don't, I just invest money. So, I, I yeah, I want to run that. So that means I'm going to need a train. As you can see here, the, the trains are pretty expensive. You know, it's 100, 200, 350. These are expensive trains. So that means I need a hundred bucks for a train. Now a, spe a special, a very special rule in this game is uh, the companies buy their tokens when they are started. So usually you have a number of tokens depending on your company. For example, in 1830, you have usually between, I think, two and five tokens. Depends on the company, as I said. And then, when you want to place a token, you get your first token for free. And then, when you want to place future tokens, you have to buy for them. And usually, they get more expensive. Here, it's different. You will have to buy your tokens at the beginning of the game at the beginning uh, when you start your company and you cannot buy additional tokens as long as the company lives it's it's not possible so you got to plan ahead and these tokens can become pretty expensive later in the game at the beginning if you start a historical company i think they're only i'm not even sure maybe the the minor companies are only 25. I think the majors are 50. Let's see. Actually, they're all 50. You can see here, 50 for the minor. And this is a major one. It's also 50. The minor needs to buy at least one token and can buy up to two. The major lead needs to buy at least two token and can buy up to five. Okay. So the thing is now, if I want to buy a train for a hundred and a token, that means I'm going to need 150 bucks for this company. Okay. I mean, I could do that, but I would have to invest. Basically, I would, yeah, I would have to buy three shares. I could... Hmm. Yeah. If I if I would not have the money to buy my tokens, I could uh, issue shares, but that is not the case here. I, I the thing is, yeah, I basically have to buy three shares. No, wait a minute. Is that so? Yeah, that, absolutely. So that's two hundred four. And uh, yeah, I only have here. 350, 60, 70. So if I start the minor company, I already have to invest 304 bucks in that. And I would have to invest probably even more to start, uh, definitely more to start my major. So I cannot start both companies. Okay, that sucks. So I could offer one of these concessions maybe to another player. The question is now which concession is the one that I want to keep? And that isn't too easy because yeah, on the one hand the minor companies make you more money per share at the beginning of the game and also later of course if they can make a lot of money but uh, 
On the long run, the major company might be more powerful because when the merger happens, I've already said this, these shares are more valuable. Uh, you get more shares out of these shares from the new company than um, from these shares in return when the major when the when the merger happens. So let me see. Okay, I, I have rolled a die to make that decision and I tended toward this one, the odds, but I actually, the die roll said, we're going to go with this one. Okay, fine. So that means, um, hmm. Hmm. I could start it at 100. Or I really started at only 68, only run my single train and try to invest in a few other shares. Maybe that's the best idea. Okay, so here's the thing. If I can make this thing running and I can make my way out of here like this or like this, you know, probably like this. The thing is I want to place a second token somewhere, otherwise I can only run a single train and that is obviously not too great. So maybe I should consider starting this thing a little higher, for example at 100. 114 seems too high because the share value cannot go beyond this, but I could start it at 100 and then uh, I could have good odds that I can place my tile before the other companies. So I might have a chance then to somehow move down here and uh, hmm. I don't know. It's a tough decision. So yeah, um, I will start that thing at a hundred bucks, and I already got a great offer from this guy to sell my or to buy my certificate for a hundred and forty. That's a very strong certificate, I think, and he's willing to pay a lot. So. Um, We got a um, hundred bucks per share and I'm going to invest, uh, I got to pay 40%. So that means I got to pay 200 bucks. That gives me the presidency here. It is a minor company. So yeah, 40%. This is the sheet. The money goes right in the treasury because obviously um, I said it's a partial capitalization and therefore the money goes directly to the company. The shares, the remaining shares go into the initial offering. I get the presidency and here's an interesting aspect. The presidency stays with the concession holder. As long as the concession remains in play, even if other sh uh, shareholders uh, should hold more um, shares than the president. The presidency sh stays with the concession holder. The concession can be sold and then the presidency will also go with the concession. And if this guy should sell now shares so that he doesn't hold 40% anymore, obviously then he will also lose the presidency and the concession will also go then to the player who will get the new presidency. So in addition to these, uh, to these, uh, yeah, now, now that purchase is done and now the company has 200 bucks and they have now to buy their tokens. And they're going to buy two tokens, 50 each, so they're going to buy themselves yeah, two tokens for 100 bucks. That's these guys here, I think, is it? Yes, FMA, no. No, it's probably that one then. What the fuck? Oh yeah, it's the SFMA, of course. One of the tokens is the share value. Oh, 
Mikdash. There we go. So we're going to mark the share value here. This is the market price. And then uh, I'm going to place a token here at Fidenze. It's obviously the starting place. And one remains here. Okay, this guy here, he decides to, to play a little different. He has this company, which isn't super strong, the SFTN, over here. You can place a dot there. Um, and it's going to be hard to make a lot of money early in the game, right? Because it's not that easy to... I mean, he could make a connection to here, but that will at least take him two turns. Uh, I don't know. He could connect with these suckers here. Okay, that is something. But as I said, he cannot go across the border. So right at the beginning of the game, maybe... It's, it might not be that easy to make a lot of money. But here's the thing. Um, at the beginning, the company does not need to have a train uh, as long as it is not hooked up. So he is actually thinking, um, I'm only buying... 20% of my shares. I'm only going to buy 20% of the presidency because I don't want to waste the money I spent for my concession. And then I buy myself three tokens, 50 each. So that me and I start the company at uh, 100, by the way. So that means there are 200 in the in the in the treasury. 150 go away for tokens. So only 50 bucks remain in the treasury. But I think for now, that is fine. I can use my, the money I have uh, to buy myself maybe shares from more promising companies like uh, this one over here or maybe one of the minor companies here. And then later in the game, I don't know, in a one or two operating rounds, I might say, okay, now I'm going to try to cross the border here. And then I might actually try to get myself a three train. And I can, yeah, I can sell some of these shares that I purchased, hurt the other players a little bit, and then buy uh, one or two of these shares, which should be then enough to get me a, sh a, th a three train. And maybe someone else is, I mean, okay, probably no one will invest in this thing. But, um, yeah, I think that makes sense. And uh, I might consider buying myself maybe one additional share so that I have 30%. So if I buy one more share, I can easily get a third train. Hmm, I wonder if I should do that. Yeah, why not? <clears throat> On the other hand, the shares will get cheaper. The longer I wait, they will drop in price. So, uh, hmm, maybe I should wait a little bit here. That's a tough call. Hmm. Yeah. I think I'm not too afraid that somebody will buy the presidency away from me at that point, and I have the concession anyway, so it is even impossible. So yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just going to buy the 20% and wait until this looks a little more promising. I mean, of course, I spent a lot of money for this, and it doesn't do me any good at the moment, but uh, that gives me now the flexibility to invest in some other companies, and I didn't lose the money for this. It, it was probably not the best idea to invest in this from the beginning. But these things happen in the game's end. Okay. Now this guy, of course, he will start this company and he wants to try to get a lot of money out of it. Okay, so I'm finally done with the initial stock round. And uh, yeah, all the purchased concessions launched a company, although this guy of the SFTN 
over here will not exactly run a train pretty soon there's not a lot of money in there um, two companies really sold a lot of shares they actually sold out both the um, IRSF F, <laughs> the IRSFF which starts in Milano and Venezia and which is a big money maker especially at the beginning of the game it will be eliminated when the Fortran comes into play but until then it's gonna make a lot of money so the president bought himself 40 percent and then um, other players bought themselves I wonder why there is only 10 percent I, I bought a concession yeah so we see 20 percent here and then every other player managed to get 10 percent um, I forgot to place a marker here I have to do that all the uh, the other one is this uh, the Leopolda here the SSFL it started for only 68 it's the only one that started at a cheaper price and it also got sold out the idea was hey we were not gonna need that much money in there because we're gonna merge with the others anyway so um, 68 is gonna be fine it's gonna be enough to buy a few trains uh, now people are were really interested in that so yeah 68 is okay and there's enough money in there okay um, apart from that this guy purchased 30 percent to start his own company here the blue ones he bought himself four tokens overall that's the most that happened most of the majors bought only three tokens actually the Leopolda Polda only bought himself two two is the minimum as a major company but he bought four tokens because he sees that really as a long-term investment you know um, can then hook up here with Milano and make a lot of money there later in the game uh, for now he only bought 30 percent 20 percent of the IRSFF but he can sell these um, if he needs more money in there right now he cannot run that many trains anyway and the the minor companies both presidents only uh, bought the presidency of 40 percent for their companies from their companies and then invested in other companies because they were uh, yeah they were more optimistic that the others will make more money okay so um, I'm gonna load this up now uh, it's a little weird we didn't even see an operating round but this went on for quite a while and yeah probably only a few of you guys <laughs> will really watch it it's a, it's a uh, it is really yeah my 18xx playthroughs are definitely weird um, a lot of babbling not a lot happening here we only see these stock tradings and all that so yeah, I hope that will change in the next video and it's going to get a little more interesting. But yeah, this game, there is so much in this game and uh, so many things to consider. Um, yeah, okay. Hope to see you on the next video or on LonesomeGamer.com. Bye.